You're watching Good Day New York. From the most powerful name in local news, Fox 5 News. Well, we've got more now on Gifford's progress because we're joined by neurosurgeon Ed Cornell. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here with you. <clears throat> so start off by telling us, you know, we're calling this a miracle. Is that accurate? Well, from what the doctors are saying now, it is essentially a miracle. If what they were saying about the trajectory of the bullet is accurate. Just lift that up a little so you can show people. What, well, oh, there, there's the camera. What, okay, yeah. what they're saying is that the bullet entered here and came out here. If that's the case, then it passed through the area here that controls movement on the right side. And additionally, the area that controls speech in the majority of people is over here. Only 5% of people are right brain dominant, meaning that the language skills are on the right side. And so if her language skills are on the left, then it would be remarkable if she had preserved language skills. Um, she may, it's too early to tell because she's just beginning to wake up and they haven't removed the tube yet, so we don't know what her ability to speak is, but the fact that she's following commands already indicates that there is some language ability that is persistent. And okay. the real question is, is she moving both legs and both arms? Because if she is, that is really, truly extraordinary. Now, is it not true that something like only 10% of people who get brain shot in the brain even can come this far, never mind survive? That's absolutely correct, because the amount of force that's transmitted to the rest of the brain when one part of the brain is damaged from a gunshot wound is tremendous. So it disrupts other areas of the brain, and it causes a tremendous amount of swelling. The doctors who took care of her did a tremendous job because they very quickly were able to reduce the pressure and control the pressure so that other parts of the brain weren't going to be damaged as well. Now we're hearing they may take out her, her uh, breathing tube at this point and then we'll really get to see uh, if she can indeed speak. I mean, that's a, that's a huge step. That's right? a huge step. One, it indicates that she is stable, that the swelling has stopped, that she hasn't had any additional bleeding in her brain. And additionally, it indicates that she is conscious enough that she can control her breathing and can control her swallowing so that she isn't going to aspirate or breathe in something that she shouldn't be breathing in. Is she out of the woods though? I mean, are there other dangers you've got to worry about here? There are always risks and I never feel comfortable with a patient until they're out of the hospital. That's when I really can breathe a sigh of relief. But the fact is that her risks are far, far less than they were two, three days ago. There's still a possibility that there could be infection, but that risk is small, and the likelihood that she's going to survive is extremely high now. Okay, and you talked about moving both sides. That's because there was a fear that she may lose the ability to move on one side. Correct. Is, that, is she out of the woods in terms of that? No, and I think it's likely that she's going to have weakness on the right side, and it, depending on whether the bullet comes high up, that would affect the leg, or if it's lower down, it would affect the arm. And the fact that she is, they say, moving her legs suggests that it's going to be her arm that may be weaker. But we'll find out in the next couple days as uh, the tube is removed. It's fascinating. It does sound like a miracle, though. It is a miracle. That's great news, Dr. Ed Cornell. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for joining us.